Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. So today I'm at the beach and was uh, taking a read of a great book called A Witch's Guide to Fairy Folk. And what I'm going to do is read a segment from you. It's going to be the chapter 3, How and Where to Find Fairies. And it's also going to cover the shifted consciousness methods and in nature methods in order to commune with fairies. So let's sit down and enjoy the beach as I read the segment to you and let me know your thoughts. Alright, chapter 3, How and Where to Find Fairies. Much of the confusion in folklore concerning finding fairies is the result of popular misconceptions about where and how these creatures live. Fairies are residents of the astral world. It is only when your consciousness has deliberately shifted when you slow your mind and focus your thought process inward and outward, that you can place yourself into the astral realm. This is where fairies are most likely to be found. A fairy is not apt to aid or harm you while you are sitting at your dinner table having a pleasant conversation with your family, but one may show up when you do your next ritual, spell, or meditation, and especially when you astral project. Sometimes we hear the questions that if fairies are of the astral plane, then why do persons who are clearly functioning in concrete earth consciousness occasionally see fairies? Planes of existence coexist, separated merely by veils of consciousness, and we and other thinking creatures are able to temporarily gain entry to these other worlds. For example, people have seen ghosts, have seen a manifestation of an outworldly form which has gained temporary entrance to our world. And we know through experience that we can travel to the astral plane and beyond. It is the same with fairies. Other fairy stories have been told about humans who fell into the fairy world by accident, as did Alice in Wonderland. Either through a stream, a well, a burrow, or down a hollow tree. These are part of recorded fairy tales and often tell of experiences which took place while the traveler was asleep or were written to explain an experience for which the person who had undergone it had no other explanation. Others are archetypal, archetypal t images which have a deeper meaning than, it first, than is at first apparent. For instance, someone who falls down a well and into another world may symbolically be returning to the womb. To find and communicate with fairies, you must open your mind as well as your heart and call upon all your talents as a witch. Next section, the shifted consciousness methods. Whether you are in a magic circle or in a city apartment or wandering through secluded woods, your best chance to see fairies is to shift your consciousness to enable you to, excuse me, to peer into the astral world where these beings live. By shifting your focus, you will slow the frequency of your brain waves, basically altered states, and your mind will expand so that your consciousness can traverse other realms of existence. Fortunately, this is not nearly as complicated as it sounds, though it does take practice to get it under control. Such changes happen naturally during the course of every 24-hour day, usually without your consent or knowledge. You fall into a light trance every time you read, watch television, sleep, or even daydream. A trance state differs from sleep in that in trance state you can seek to control your brain waves and direct the course of your thoughts. Other terms for an altered state of consciousness are meditative state, astral sleep, lucid dreaming, trance state, going out, going within, out of body experience, and shifted consciousnesses. All describe the same process and all are acceptable synonyms for each other. There are several methods of shifting consciousness. Every witch has his or her own favorite and none is better or more right than any other. Just different. Scrying is one of the easiest of the shifted conscious methods to learn. Scrying is the act of gazing gently into some reflective surface such as a lake, a candle flame, a bowl of water, or a mirror in order to slow and focus the mind and bring about visions. This has been a popular method of divination for centuries because it requires nothing more than the witch to have some commonly found items. And, oh, sorry, let me repeat that. 
This has been a popular method for divination for centuries because it requires nothing more than the witch and some commonly found item. To scry, form in your mind that which you want to see or know. In this case, fairy contact. Then gaze, but do not stare into your chosen scry aid, all the while concentrating on viewing fairyland. Don't force your mind to cooperate, but try to keep gently focused. If your thoughts wander, simply bring them back and continue. With practice, this becomes easier. You might also try scrying into particular element associated with a fairy you especially want to contact. For example, try scrying into a golden surface for seeing a treasure hoarding fairy, water for a water spirit, misty air for a winged fairy, or a handful of rich dark earth for a gnome. Meditation, particularly guided meditation, sometimes called patchworking, is probably an, an easier method of contacting fairies because when you feel dreamily, dreamily carried along with a guide, you are immediately able to follow your non-critical subconscious mind to do your thinking. Following chapter 4 is the complete text of a guided meditation which you can be used to facilitate fairy contact. This meditation carries the witch into the astral realm of fairyland and allows meeting with our four fairy forms who are known to be friendly towards humans. And I'll do that guided meditation sometime down the road in a separate video. In other forms of meditation, one systematically slows and focuses their thoughts until they have no thoughts at all, or until they are concentrating solely on one thing. In this case, you would be, you would concentrate on fairy contact. To participate in this type of meditation, simply spend time concentrating solely on one object, such as a flower or a leaf, to the exclusion of all else. You can do this with your eyes open or closed. Practice increasing the amount of time you can spend on that object without your mind straying. Later you can put the exercise to practical use by focusing on finding fairies and seeing fairyland. Astral projection or lucid dreaming is another very good way to find fairies because with this practice you go immediately into their world. However, astral projection can be difficult for some people to learn. Many books have been published on the topic and each writer has his or her own method for proceeding. I highly suggest taking a look at Bob Monroe's books. He's covered this topic up, down, left, and right, and his material is excellent. And I can also give some tips too if anyone has any questions in the comments section. Moving along. Astral projection is defined as consciously sending forth a part of yourself to another place or time. Many persons mistakenly believe it is the real you, or the soul matter, which is expelled. Rationally, this is an impossibility. The essence, which is you, cannot leave its physical shell without causing death. It is your deep mind which journeys forth. Your deep mind which can turn so far in on itself that it goes out of itself. And which has the ability to contact any and all other intelligences and planes of existence. Because the astral plane is in the mind, it is synonymous with the term inner place. Inner plane, I apologize. Our pagan ancestors were well aware of the power of the inner plane and that all things were possible there even though we may not always be able to achieve them. When darkness came and they gathered around their hearths for protection and warmth, they would tell the old folk stories and reach deep into these other realms of existence. The last lines of the nursery rhyme, How many miles to Babylon, clearly illustrates their beliefs about these worlds. If the darkness fall about me, can I get there by candlelight? If your heels are nimble and light, you can get there by candlelight. No doubt this poem was a veiled way of saying, yes, anything is possible when the mind is quiet and you make an effort. Years of hiding witchcraft from the authorities beyond metaphors has caused many witches who have not yet achieved success with this practice to believe astral projection to be something that it is not. Many expect to feel shot out of their bodies as if from a cannon. Others feel like they should be flying. But the whole process is really as simple as learning lucid dreaming. 100% sure. 100% accurate right there. Once you feel your consciousness to be elsewhere other than in your own head, as in the dream, but at the same time you manage to have conscious control of it, you are astral projecting. 